this now nationwide understanding that they don't do anything in free agency. And I do think that that there is some blood on on the front office's hands finally in that respect, um, because for a long time, I mean, even even as recently as, you know, I would say three years ago, pick your veteran free agent that's available or gets cut. Yeah. Last month. And people people love to say things like, oh, Jerry will will spin big. Jerry will go after him. That just hasn't been the case. As you and I have discussed, the last big ticket free agency or free agent they spent on was Brandon Carr in 2012. And he did not turn into, speaking of, prime Deion Sanders. And because of that, they felt like the contract was this waste of time, even though he was a very serviceable player for them. And ever since then, they have been so gun-shy. Uh, there have been all sorts of assessments and analyses done on how low they are as far as just cash spending relative to other NFL teams. And so I think that that is kind of the the most prominent thing. They exacerbated that, to be very clear, by claiming they would be all in, and, and that was whatever it was. Um, but they've almost... I mean, I think that they're expert gaslighters and, and they've done that for a very long time. And I think that um, I'm sure you're well aware with the third Mighty Ducks movie, Greg. Yeah. Oh, intimately okay. aware. Um, I, I use this a lot because it, it speaks to me that the story is they're these kids that play or high school hockey and they're on scholarship and they've been this really successful team through the first two movies and they have this this one trick they do it's called the flying v where they they form a v and they fly and they score goals and it's awesome whatever uh and they try this in a match that they have set up against the varsity at this at this high school and they try and they just get steamrolled i mean like it, it's just like embarrassing like how, how poorly it, it goes and their coach catches them scrimmaging against the varsity, and he's just cussing them out because he's a new coach. He's not the guy they've been playing under for the previous two films, and they've all struggled with this dichotomy. And he says, your little duck tricks won't work here. And it just kind of speaks to life and growth, right? Like, we all kind of go through that. And that's how the Cowboys are to me, is they think, like, they can jump on the local radio and Jerry can use some smoke and mirrors and people will fall for it. But your average fan nowadays is so much more educated and has so yeah. much access to information like what you all provide that it just doesn't work in the same way. Yeah, that's uh, surprising to hear regarding the money situation. So salary cap wise, are there issues? Are they OK? Uh, is there any reason? Is that a part of the reason, at least now, where Jerry can't really spend too much money going into next season? They have no issue crying wolf um, okay. on that front. But like we, we see this with any team you can make whatever space you want to make. I mean, that's true. and and that's, that was such a, that was the genesis of our frustration with the DAC and CD deals. You can make an argument that there should have been a point of no return with DAC specifically because he was heading into the final year of his contract and they could, because they couldn't franchise tag him. They could have done that with CD obviously. And you can make an argument that even if you agree, even if you believed that bringing DAC back was the better choice that, I mean, pick whatever day you want, May 10th, that after that they they should they could have just said you know what we we didn't get it done we're prepared to live with the consequences but by waiting until literally the day that the season began which was when the tax deal got done in case anybody forgot it was I, again literally done in the most inefficient manner possible you you could not have done it in a more inefficient way and so because of that, they can now cry wolf about it even more so. They can now in 2025 say, well, the cap space and DAC and, you know, percentage of the pie and all this kind of stuff. When if they had taken care of the DAC extension and the CD one for that matter and the MICA one for that matter at the beginning of the offseason, they would have created even more salary cap space to work with. If they had gotten the DAC extension done at the beginning of the 2023 offseason before Jalen Hurts got his deal or Lamar Jackson or Justin Herbert or anybody else that cycle, they would have had even more salary cap space for two years. But they didn't get these things done then. They procrastinated and waited until the last moment. And even while procrastinating, they still could have signed Derrick Henry or whoever you want. But there are enough people who just absorb this information from Facebook or word of mouth that they don't know these things intimately and yeah. they believe what the Joneses say. How surprising is that following the team as long as you have knowing that, I mean, you can say what you want about right or wrong decisions or draft picks or this, that, or the other thing, but I mean, they know how it, how it works. So what do you think? Why do you think they're running the organization this way? It, it's said often and it's it's hard to believe. And I think it's hard to believe at first for someone like me because you live in, in the echo chamber that is covering the team and, and you live in the, the intimate knowledge of these things. And you think like, how could everybody not know this? And, and then you kind of recognize, you know, you're the 1%, you know, that is, yeah. you know, consuming this all the time. Um, I would offer that like for seven years running, they are repeatedly the most valuable professional sports franchise in the world. Sure. I mean, and so from a, 
a business making standpoint, if you assume that is the bottom line and it's difficult not to, why? I mean, what what they're doing is successful, right? Like if if that is the bottom line, and we from a True. competitive standpoint, we would disagree that it would be so. But if it yeah. is, that nothing is wrong. I mean, nothing yeah. is wrong in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um. And and it's so not wrong that they can be this bad and be talked about more than the Vikings, who are having an incredible season, yeah. or than even the Lions, who are maybe the the best team in the NFC or maybe NFL at this point. So, um, which is what feeds the idea. I do think that's taking on you know, a larger percentage of the fan base. But I guess to, to primarily answer your question, I don't say this in a in a conceited way on behalf of the fan base, but it's the biggest fan base in the NFL. It's it's worldwide. And so it's just yeah. impossible to get this many people to understand something. And you can always count on the fact that someone will say it's Dak's fault. You know, it's McCarthy's fault. Like there, there will always be that random uncle or aunt at your Thanksgiving table this week who will say like, these players just make too much money. They're greedy and they will move the goalposts anywhere else because that's just the way it's been for all of time. So, so if there's a Dallas Cowboy fan out there watching this and, and they're hoping for something to change, something to be different with the way that this team has been run and just even this last year with the contract situation or this season, did you, is there any hope? Is there anything that you can kind of tell them to make them feel a little bit better at that. Cause I always, hear, you know, as a jet fan, I always hear the same thing too about Woody, Woody Johnson is Woody. Johnson. Well, it's not like complaining about a head coach. He's not going anywhere. So you can complain all you want. It doesn't matter. He's not selling the team just like Dallas. So you can't say Jerry Jones, you could say it, but it's just, it's useless. He's not selling the team. So is there, but eventually he does need to give someone else some more power to run the team. Now it could be 10 years from now. It could be this off season. Is, is that what fans are hoping for at that point? Or are they just, like you said, are they just kind of, Hey, you know, it is what it is. And you know, this is the life of a Cowboys fan. I hate to be that much of an Eeyore about it, but it is the case. I mean, and you you bring up the Jets. Bring, I mean, we could bring up the Chicago Bulls. We could bring up, yes. you know, a number of different teams across professional sports that are just, you know, money printers for their owners. And, you know, and in a in a practical sense, I understand, like, why would I work significantly harder to to maybe make like 0.05 percent more? You know what I mean? Like the the return isn't <laughs> worth the investment in that sense. Um I, you know, I was reminded, I'd forgotten this happened and the internet was a popular place in 2013. Don't get me wrong, but it was not what it is now. You know, nowadays an owner like Jerry Jones says something and it is immediately available yes. everywhere. So maybe you don't know the quote that I'm talking about, but um, a mandatory shout out to the great Bob Stern from the ticket in Dallas has an incredible sub stack and, and, Sturm wrote about this and I'd forgotten about it. If you recall the Cowboys and this sounds like a joke, but it really happened. They lost three consecutive week 17 NFC East title games. Uh, it was it was win winner what takes the division, loser misses the playoffs. In 2011, it happened against the Giants, who went on to win the world the the Super Bowl. In 2012, it happened against Washington, and in 2013, it happened against the Eagles. It literally happened three years in a row against all three divisional teams. I mean, the, again, like the odds of that happening are just yeah. astounding. But it, that really did happen. And after that third one, after the Cowboys lost in 2013, Tony Romo didn't play that game for what it's worth. It was Kyle Orton that night. They lost to, to Philadelphia to Chip Kelly and Nick Foles, the first iteration. Um, and after the game, Jerry Jones was asked if if it was depressing. You know, in the, this was a home game for Dallas at AT&T Stadium. Was it embarrassing, you know, because they'd lost a third win and in game against the, the third division rival? I mean, the, the comedy speaks for itself. And Jerry's quote that night, and I had forgotten about this, was, look around. How could you be sad in a building like this? <laughs> I, and if he said that today, you know what I mean? After after last week's Monday Night Football loss of the Texans, I mean, that quote's all over the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but because the internet was a bit more precarious, you know, nine, 11 years ago, um, it didn't necessarily blow up. But, I mean, if – if that doesn't, you could pick any one of these things, like pick any one of the low points. I mean, they let Jason Garrett coach the team for a decade. I, I mean, yeah. so I'm, I'm really not inclined to say that <laughs> something's going to change. Yeah, it will. At some point it always does. Uh, you just don't know when. So, well, I know one thing uh, we are definitely looking forward to talking to you again uh, when we do get to the off season, but before I let you go, just a couple of minutes on this game coming up on Thursday, Cowboys are a four point favorite against the, uh, New York Giants that have lost six straight, straight up and against the spread. The Cowboys do have two very, actually three very impressive trends going into this game, though. And by the way, you can get that here at Playbook. 
This is uh, one of our uh, partners here. Mark Lawrence does a great job with this playbook magazine. So uh, the Cowboys are 25 and four against the spread in their last 29 division favorite uh, situations when they were at two point or more uh, favorite. And by the way, it was 25 and three uh, until they lost to the Giants spread wise, but they were a six point favorite and only won by five. So they were that close to being 26 and three against the spread in their last 29 division uh, favorite two or more roles. They've also covered 13 straight as a favorite of two or more off of a division game when they take on a losing team. And they've won seven straight against the New York Giants, covering five out of seven. So there's an awful lot here that says to take the Dallas Cowboys. And if you just take a look at what happened to the game on Sunday, the two games between these two teams on Sunday, you would say, yeah, the Cowboys are a pretty good play on, on Thursday. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, Look, playing on a Thursday is difficult, and the Cowboys have already done it once this year. That was, if you're unaware, the first time they ever had to play a road Thursday game coming off of a Sunday. And it was actually against the Giants. It was uh, on Thursday Night Football. They had never done that before. They had generally, um, they, they play on Thursday Night Football a week after Thanksgiving, seven full days later. So they don't, even if that game's on the road, they still get seven days. You know, they don't, okay. you know, whatever. Um, so it was the first time that ever happened. So, th but they're very, very well used to this, obviously, because they play on Thanksgiving every year. And they did play the Giants on this day two years ago. So there's a little bit of familiarity there. Um, I, everything you said is, is mathematical and evidence-based, and I certainly sure. don't disagree with it. But beyond all of that, if there is a team that has quit in the NFL, it's the Giants. And, and so like that. Yeah. I, I don't think that having to be torn away from their families on Thanksgiving and have to hear, you know, different people in their families say, are you sure? You know, I wish you could just be home and all that annoyance. I mean, I just have a very difficult time seeing how they win this game, how the Giants do. And therefore, I don't even think they'll cover to that point. I'm I am not at all comfortable laying points uh at, you know for the Dallas Cowboys in any yeah. way better form but but this is the moment to do so. They haven't won at home the Cowboys since December 30th of last year. That was uh the Lions game that went down to the wire that had the controversial ending. That was also the night that Jimmy Johnson went into the Ring of Honor. Um so maybe he put a different curse on this team when that officially happened. Um that's still a no if the Cowboys <laughs> lose on on Thanksgiving then I will really believe it. Really? Um yeah. I think Dallas wins and it sounds stupid, and I'm I'm telling you on Monday that I I know that it's stupid. But when the Cowboys win on th on Thanksgiving on Friday morning, I will write the article about their path to the playoffs. Because I mean, if you look, I I don't I don't believe that they're a playoff team. To be very clear with you and upfront with you, but their next game is on Monday Night Football, so they get a really long you know mini buy relative to to Thursday Night Football, obviously, and it's against the Bengals, who are downtrodden, and who knows what'll happen between now and then. And after that, they get the Panthers. And after that, they get this Bucks team that, you know, looks tall because they just played these Giants. But other than that, they just lost four in a row. I mean, it's not – I've I've definitely seen stranger things happen, but I, I would not bet on it myself. All right. Well, that would be interesting, and at least that would be a nice little take. I'm sure you're already getting that ready. You might as well because, uh, again, I, I just can't see the Giants winning. Uh, and uh, we actually talked about this on several of our shows last week about the idea of certain teams out there that do look like – that they have just given up, whether it's on their coach or the season or whatever the case may be. And it looked like the Cowboys were one of those teams for a little bit until they changed things up on Sunday. So anything's possible. Giants could make that change on Thursday, but probably doubtful, especially since the Cowboys are so, I mean, like you said, they've got to be so desperate to just give their fans something to be happy about with a home win this season. It's Thanksgiving. If it was another situation, I might be thinking, well, but uh, they they got to give their fans something to be happy about, and uh, and I probably see that happening. Yeah, and with their next game on Monday Night Football, you know, I I do think it provides an. It's kind of like keep you know, it going. Go, yeah, yeah, you go on like a like a four mile run. You know, when you get to that last like three quarters of a mile, you're like, well, this really sucks. But like, it's just three quarters of a mile. Like, I can I can do this. I can make it through this. And you know, then when I do, it's over, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I think if the Cowboys get to Friday morning, having won their last two, and they get till next week's Monday night football game, which will be alternate casted with a Simpsons theme, I'm sure you saw, um, you know, that that really quiets everything that that just, you know, they really need this boat to be in some calm waters for a little while. And a win on Thanksgiving would do that. RJ, appreciate your time as always. I uh, uh... Hey, wish you the best of luck uh, the rest of the season. Hopefully it gives you enough to write about, which I'm sure covering Dallas Cowboys, it does. So it's not a problem. 
No, thanks for having me. Happy Thanksgiving and, yes. and Merry Christmas to you and and, and the team. Um, and um, hopefully, um, hopefully, all the games this weekend are uh, are full of drama. I'm an Arizona State Sun Devil, so I'm just looking to get through this and get to the Big Twelve Championship. But given that it's at AT and T Stadium, it will probably let me down as well. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know about that, but I, I see what you're coming from. It's been a great season for Arizona State, as you know. And uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be putting a video together just now about the college football uh, championship, the conference championship uh, scenarios. And of course, the Big 12 is just an absolute mess trying to figure out everything. If, uh, if we go, I mean, obviously, a lot of projections at the moment, um, which will get destroyed this coming week. But if we go to Columbus, I might have to do that. I mean, because wow. how often could you see the Sun Devils in, in at at the shoe? I mean, how you know awesome what I mean. Would that be? It it would be pretty sick. So a um, win and you advance game. Exactly. I mean, and if you get blown out by fifty, it's the who no cares? <laughs> like who cares? So I uh, I'm gonna think about it uh, over the next month. Well, if you do go to the Columbus, uh, being that Arizona State's a warm weather team, hopefully it will be a balmy uh, day. Uh, in Ohio, which it probably won't be. But anyway, I think, like you said, you'll just be happy to be there. For so. sure. RJ, appreciate it. We'll talk to you hopefully sometime soon. Sounds good.